What's going on, people? We are back at it again. Catechism Tuesdays, week 11. Week 11. Hey, we got the music in the background playing. It's not really us, though. It's the people over there, you know what I'm saying? So you can hear it. They jamming over there, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we might go over there afterwards. Let's hit it. I mean, so Catechism Tuesdays, week 11. We're going to get right into this question. What does God require in the 6th, 7th, and 8th commandments? Let me answer that. Six, that we do not hurt or hate or be hostile to our neighbor, but be patient and peaceful, pursuing even our enemies with love. Seventh, that we abstain from sexual immorality and live purely and faithfully, whether in marriage or in single life, avoiding all impure actions, looks, words, thoughts, or desires, and whatever might lead to them. Eighth, that we do not take without permission that which belongs to someone else, nor withhold any good from someone we might benefit. So, Catechisms Week 11, Pastor V, go ahead and unpack the Sixth Commandment for us a little bit. So the Sixth Commandment uh, is you shall not murder, and you see that explanation of it, and it's a, both a, the negative and positive. The negative is obviously we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't kill people, but it's more than that. I think the commandment behind that is, is also not just the physical killing of people, but the verbal killing of people. The ways in wow, which yeah. we, we speak words of hate, of gossip, uh, of slander, the thoughts of hate, of gossip, of slander, uh, that they harm people. They are essentially murdering people in, in a spiritual, emotional sense. That we're not to do that, but then the positive version of that is that instead, we're to pursue people with patience, with peacefulness, with love, to have words and actions uh, and thoughts that are uh, for the benefit of other people. So I think it's important to see both at play. Um, so Seventh Commandment. Yeah, Seventh Commandment is basically uh, you should not commit adultery. And I really like how this is actually worded. It, it talks about uh, we should abstain from sexual immorality, uh, immorality and, and live purely. But it also talks about whether in marriage or in single life. So yeah. hence to the single people out there, this includes you yeah. as well. Um, but there's like, married people too. Married people as well. <laughs> it includes everybody. Yeah. But the idea of just being, you know, uh, being sexually pure. And I think in our culture that's very difficult, very hard to do. Yeah. Uh, because what it, what it talks about as well as here is your thoughts, the words, the looks, all the different things. And it's not necessarily just the physical aspect, but also the, 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 the spiritual aspect as well. And even in terms of how we think and stuff like that. So uh, I think that's very important for us. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Eighth, eighth commandment. Eighth, yeah. yep. Um, so eighth commandment is you should not steal. And again, we see the negative and the positive of this. Uh, the negative of, okay, don't steal, don't take something that doesn't belong to you. Um, but the positive one, I think is really especially worth pointing out here that also, we're to not withhold any good from someone we might benefit, that we're stealing in a sense when we're not giving what is good and beneficial to those around us. That uh, mm -hmm. and I think this fits in with uh, things that we looked at in the other uh, parts of the catechism, that we're made in the image of God. And there's, you might say, an obligation to honor the image of God in other people, to seek mm -hmm. the good of other people, the benefit of other people as being made in the image of God. That essentially, we're stealing <laughs> uh, wow. from, from them by uh, withholding the kind of good that we might be able to give to those around so, us. So it's a little bit about just having this idea of being grace motivated. Yeah. You know, we want to be motivated by grace to be able to do good for other yeah, people. definitely. And not withhold anything. Yeah. You know? I think all of these really, the, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth command, commandment, it really points to our need for Jesus. Because yeah. we understand we, we do, do not do this <laughs> on our own. We don't do it perfectly at all. We're terrible sinners. Um, so we really need Jesus to really, really do this. I believe in question 13, it'll get more into that yeah. a little bit. But specifically, we need Jesus. We need to know about him. We need to know how he created the world, how he is a redeemer and coming to restore all things, and how he suffered and he died and he rose from the grave. And that enables us to be able to, to, to live out that gospel, to be able to, to I mean, do that. It speaks to how much of a savior Jesus is. He's a holistic savior. He saves us in, in thought and word and action and deed. We need his whole transformation of our lives if we're to live according yeah. to the ways that God calls us to. Absolutely, man. Well, there you have it, folks. We are about to be out. Catechism Tuesdays, week 11. Please like and share comment. because like and share and comment. And we about to go out here. We're gonna go. We're gonna go jam. That's what we're about to do, so <laughs> I know some old hits out there. Yeah, man. You know, a little '90s and stuff. So you know. All right, man. Love God. Love people. We are out. Peace.